something good that he's done for you I know you're in your cars but you can have a personal worship right where you are come on open up your mouth right where you are come on say yes to the spirit Say yes to his way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Is that your testimony on the field? I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey when your spirit come on talk to me here speaks to me with my whole heart I, I'll agree and my answer I wish I wouldn't by myself will be yes Lord yes Come on, would you help me sing? I'll say yes, Lord, yes. Come on, help me. To your will, yeah. Give me a little church. I'll say yes. Come on. Lord, yes. Yeah. I will trust. Come on. Said when your spirit speaks to me with my heart. Yeah. 
you. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that in spite of ourselves, you woke us up this morning. Thank you for starting us on our way. Thank you, God, that while we've been in this pandemic, God, thank you that you've been keeping us like only you can. And we do declare that if it wasn't for you on our side, we don't know where we would be. Now, God, we come confessing that we've fallen short of your glory for your word says all have sinned and come short of your glory. But God, thank you for another chance. Thank you that you're not the God of a second chance because we messed that up years ago. But thank you that you're the God that keeps giving chance after 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 chance. Thank you for keep giving us chances. Now, God, I pray continue to the psalmist that you simply let the words of my mouth. And the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we do pray. It's at that name every knee's got to bow, every tongue's got to confess that he is Lord. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Everybody say amen. amen. If you love the Lord, let me see the hands and hear the horns of those who love the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Well, good morning, aim well. Good morning. Good to see everybody here today. And while you're in the hunky mood, would you help me thank God for our pastor emeritus and our, our first lady emeritus. Can you help me thank God for Reverend Jackson and Mrs. Jackson? Come on, let's give God praise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, and we're grateful uh, for all of you that came, came to be with us today. And of course... As I let some of you all know that tune into our family check-in every week. Uh, yesterday, your pastor uh, celebrated 16 years in the preaching ministry. Amen. Amen. And a few of my family members said, well, you going to have somebody else to preach? I said, no, the best way to celebrate preaching <laughs> is to preach. <laughs> so I want to preach today. Amen. Listen, brothers and sisters, last year... I um, preached a topical message. That's a topical message, uh, which means that it doesn't necessarily come from a particular text, but it comes from a particular topic. Last year, I preached uh, from the subject, uh, I'm taking precautions. And we really talked through um, some terms uh, from this pandemic, like social distancing and things of that nature. Today I want to preach another topical sermon. Uh, how many of you all have ever heard of the milk crate challenge? Have y'all heard of that? Okay, y'all seen some of the videos? Okay. Uh, today I want to talk <laughs> on behalf of the milk crates. <laughs> I want to preach this message entitled A Message from the milk crates a message from the milk crates just in case brothers and sisters you don't know or never heard of the milk crate challenge it is also known as the crate challenge it's a video challenge that became viral online in august of 2021 the challenge involves catch this brothers and sisters stacking milk crates such as the ones that are stacked before me Stacking these milk crates into a structure that resembles a one-dimensional pyramid with both sides of the structure functioning as stairs to which the participants is expected to climb up to the top of the crates and to climb back down without falling or destroying the structure. Brothers and sisters, this activity has faced some criticism by health professionals for there are more often than not people who are falling from these milk crate structures that stand up to 12 feet in the air. But can I tell you, brothers and sisters, there's another challenge within this challenge. And the challenge is really is to see how much an individual values themselves over the approval of others. Because what you must understand, 
most of the people who are involved, who are taking on this challenge, they are really not necessarily trying to achieve anything but going viral. That is, that is, they're not, they're only trying to achieve getting the likes and the loves and the approval of others on social media. But what, what most of them don't understand that they are risking life and limb just so they can get likes. <laughs> Maybe brothers and sisters, that is what, what the challenge is really challenging is whether or not you, you value yourself over other people's approval. Can I tell you brothers and sisters, the Bible is clear when it says these words, he says, what does it profit a man All right. to gain the whole world, but lose his soul. Basically what the text is trying to teach is that you can have the, the world's approval, but if you don't have God's approval, it's, it's, worth, it's worth nothing. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, I think the word for you and I today with, with this milk crate challenge is, to, is this word. Don't be so desperate for other people's approval that you end up hurting yourself trying to get their approval. Let me say that again. Don't be so desperate for others' approval that you hurt yourself trying to please everybody else. And perhaps I'm talking to somebody today who drove here uh, in, in, this, in this weather. You drove here, and the truth is you are hurting and tired now because you keep trying to please everybody. But the hopeful words of the text is that you got to value yourself over other people's approval. When I thought about this, Reverend Jackson, when I thought about the fact that this milk crate challenge and God put this message on my heart, you do know William Shakespeare said that there can be some sermons in stones. And if it be true, Reverend Jackson, that, that simply means that if there are sermons in stones, there must be a message in some milk crates. So here, 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 here's what I believe this milk crate challenge is trying to teach us. Just four quick things and I'll let you go. Here's the first thing. The first thing that this that this that, that these milk crates are tailored to teach us is that we are better together. Right. We are better yeah. together. We are better together. One scientific study of the reason why these structures don't hold up under people walking on them. It is not necessarily uh, about how, uh, how these uh, crates are stacked upon each other, nor is it about the weight of the person who's walking on the structure. But what scientists say, the problem with these structures and why they don't stand is because while the crates have been stacked, they are no, they are not connected to one another. That's right. What scientists say that this challenge wouldn't be a challenge if every single crate was connected on the same line. <sighs> Which simply means this, brothers and sisters, that simply means that, 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 the, that the reason why it's a challenge is because they are not together. <laughs> right. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, when I think about this, as your pastor, can I tell you that, that we are better together? Yes. That simply means, child of God, disagreement or not. Feelings or not. Perspectives or not. Titles or not. We are better together. What scientists say is that what, 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 what would help these structures stand the weight is that if they were better connected. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, that when I look at all these cars on this field, when I look at all these cars on the street, it must be a sign that we are better together. Don't you know, Aimwell? I told you last month, don't you know?
that the New York Times produced an article. And Reverend Jackson, that was a, a, a very startling statistic in the article. And it simply said that over 1,300 churches are slated to close by the end of 2021. But the good news is, ain't well, ain't on that list. <laughs> you know why ain't well ain't on that list? Because we are better together. <laughs> That means that, that even if you're on the usher board, we are better. Lord, I wish I had some help in here together. That even if you're singing on the praise team, we are better together. That even if you just driving here every Sunday, we are better together. Is there anybody here that can say, I'm not trying to fight nobody because in these tedious times, I recognize that we are better together. Come in, Hezekiah Walker. He said, I need you to survive. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Let me hear the horns and see the hands of the people who can say we are better together. Yeah, we better together. And that simply means, brothers and sisters, he, I feel like preaching now. That simply means, brothers and sisters, that we can't just be stacked together. But we've got to be stuck together. Y'all don't know when to get happy. Right now, we are stacked together. But when we pray for each other, when we give to continue to be a blessing to our church, we ain't just stacked. We stuck. I wish I had somebody here that said, I didn't drive here because I was ready to be stacked. But the reason why I keep praying for my church, I keep praying for the leadership, I keep giving to my church, that ain't no stack testimony. That's a stuck testimony. While other churches are going back in, you still worshiping outside. That ain't because you stacked. That's because you recognize you're stuck. And let me hit the horns and see the hands of the stuck praisers. That can say, I ain't stuck here. I'm stuck. Come on, look at the car next to you and say, we stuck together. One of my friends, Rev, been married about 10 years. And, uh, one of the children walked in on them having a... Uh, yes. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> yes. No, 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 not that. Uh, uh, <laughs> Reverend Jack, get your mind out of that. All right. <laughs> uh, but they were they were having an argument. <laughs> you know the other spectrum, Reverend. <laughs> I ain't going to start nothing here. Okay. Uh, um, and, 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 and so... He, the kid walked in on his mom and dad arguing. Kid started to cry. Oh Lord, mom and daddy about to break up. They about to get a divorce. So where you get that from? Say so my friend's parents had a disagreement, fell out, got a divorce. To which the parents said, "We ain't them." That's right. As for me and your mama, yeah. he said we stuck together. That's right. Can I tell you, brothers, that, that ought to be your resolve every single day of your life. That we are stuck together as a church family. Can I have a witness out here? We stuck together. Here's the second thing I believe these milk crates are designed to teach us. Number two, I believe it's trying to teach us. It's trying to teach us. Watch your feet. Because people want to see you fall. I'll say it again. Watch your feet. People want to see you fall. The entire, what makes this milk crate challenge of people walking up one side and coming down the other, what makes it viral is for this one single solitary fact is that people love to see you fall. Can I tell you, people want to see you, see you fall. 
I've discovered this. Um, I hate to tell you this. Sometimes some of those people got your last name. Because if you ain't careful, you will have jealous family members. Come on, talk to me here. Some of y'all got some friends who are really frenemies. They act like they're your friend, but they're really your enemy. And these people, this is how you can identify people who want to see you fall. They are there when something happens bad. But they are absent and silent when something good happens. Do you know some people like that? That you can always depend on them to come in with some mess. But when's the last time they brought a blessing in your life? Come on, talk to me here. And if you look at these Milk Crate Challenge videos, when you get back home, if you haven't seen it, Google Milk Crate Challenge videos. You'll discover a common theme in every video. People are filming people walk up the structure. Yeah. But as soon as they fall, nobody helps the person up. Nope. Do you know some people like that? Yes. That, 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 that it seems like they are present when you are, your life is kind of rocky. But as soon as you need a helping hand, nowhere to be found. Come on, you know some people like that. Yes. They show up for the party, but won't help you clean up. Come on, oh, talk to me here. On, on, and you got to be careful, child of God, because there are some people who, who, who don't want to see you stand Right. They just want to see you fall. That's right. I know, I know you love them. But sometimes the people you love the most want to want to want to see you fall the most. Come on. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, that is a tragic reality of life. That everybody will not be for you. Mm. Everybody won't want to see you stand, but there'll be some people who get excited when they see you going through. But because that's the case in this challenge and even in the message, here's the admonition that since people are waiting for you to fall, make sure you watch your feet. Okay, what, what you mean, Pastor Trey? Well, watch your feet is simply this, that since everybody else and some people are trying to wait for you to fail, Make sure you don't walk around like you can't fall. All right. Because some of us, we give ammunition to the adversaries in our lives because we are so arrogant. Come on. I, I figured y'all gonna back up off me on that one. And can I tell you, child of God, you gotta be careful because this, this, this structure teaches us one thing. It teaches me this, Terrence Mixon, that if you discover and look at these videos, nobody has a problem walking on the lower stairs. But things start to go wrong the higher they get on the structure. Maybe that's a word to you and I, that, that it's harder to keep your balance on the top than it is when you're living on the bottom. And can I tell you something? Whatever you do, don't get full of yourself when you're at the top. Because the top is the most dangerous place that you can fall. And that's why God can't trust some of us at the top. It's because we're too careless at the bottom. Some, some of us, God wants to take us to the top. But our characters only lets us live on a certain level. It is. Which is why you got to say this, child of God. You got to look at yourself and ask and pray this prayer. Lord, order my steps. <laughs> In your word. That, 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 that's because all of us have a tendency to wonder off of the path. Don't look at me funny. You've wandered off of the path yourself. Yeah. All of us have a tendency to wander off the path that God has.
for our lives. So you gotta say, God, order my steps. Why? How, how does he order my step? Simon says, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Say, say that if, if, if you really want to watch your feet, you got to make sure that your steps are ordered by the word of God. Are y'all with me today? That's why every day before you go into work, you got to say, God, order my steps. Because I work with some fools who want to see me fall. And so, God, before I give them a piece of my mind, I need you to order my steps. Because if you watch your feet, understand people want to see you fall. Here's the, here's, the, here's the third thing. Here's the third thing. I believe that these milk crates are trying to teach us this. That you are made for more than what they think. You were made for more than they think. What's interesting about these milk crates that are st stacked before me these milk crates are made to carry up to four gallon jugs of milk, which equals about 36 pounds. The average human being weighs about 177 pounds plus some tax. <laughs> and uh, what you got to understand, these milk crates were made to carry stuff. They were made yeah, to carry something on the inside. Lord help. Lord help. Come on now. But the problem with the challenge is that people aren't letting them carry anything. They are stepping on them. Oh. <laughs> What's interesting, I did, some, I did some research last night and I discovered there's a law in the state of Pennsylvania that, that literally talks about unauthorized use of milk crates. To what this law is saying, it said that if you are caught using a milk crate for something other than it was created and made, it says you will get a $300 fine and up to 90 days in jail. Now, if the state of Pennsylvania got enough sense Come on. not to let people have unauthorized use of some crates, yeah. how much so, brothers and sisters, should you not allow people to have unauthorized use of you? Oh. Talk to me here. Because I'm talking to somebody here today. You got some people in your life, and instead of appreciating what you're carrying, <laughs> They're busy trying to step on you. <laughs> busy trying to put their foot on you. And can I tell you, brothers and sisters, you got to make sure you remind people, I wasn't made for that. <laughs> I was made for something more than that. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, there will be some people who won't focus on what's in you, but they only focus on your ability to take them to another level. I call them leeches. They attach themselves to you only to drain the very life out of you. <laughs> some of you gotta, gotta, gotta go back to work. Got some friends like that. Who that, that, that seems like the only use they have for you is when they need you. But when you need them, they are nowhere to be found. Because some people only can step on you instead of appreciating what God put inside of you. But can I tell you that when you have people that would rather step on you than appreciate what God is doing in you, here's what you need to be reminded. Don't get upset with them. I know they were wrong because the truth is because of the gift that you are. 
When people take advantage of your kindness, they are really taking advantage of themselves. Because when you are the blessing, you don't miss out on being the blessing because somebody used you. They missed out on God using you to be a blessing to them. Is there anybody here that can say you say you cheated yourself? <laughs> you tried yourself. You messed up your own blessing because had you done right by me, somebody ought to get a color purple anointing and say, until you do right by me. <laughs> Come on, talk to me. Somebody talk to me here. I'd say when people do you right, that they don't even know. The reason why they still got a job is because they've been nice to you. The only reason why they still making it like they're making it it's because they did something for you and God is blessing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but don't get mad when they try to use you. Jesus. Yeah, they're going to try to use y'all. I get it. But here's what you got to remember. Come on. <laughs> Look what happens to the people who tried to climb the structure. Yeah. They used the crates for something other than what they were created. And when they stepped on the crates, they failed. Y'all don't know when to get happy. Uh, the people who use the crates for something other than the fact that they were made for it, they fail trying to misuse <laughs> the crates. I'm talking to somebody. God told me to tell you, don't you fight that person that took advantage of you. Because I discovered this. That you got to leave the enemy to their own devices. And that same devil that took advantage of you, the Bible says just give it a little time. And watch how they fall after they thought they were taking you down. And is there anybody here that can thank God that the people that misuse you, the people that took advantage of you, you ain't got to worry about them. Because my Bible says you reap what you sow. And somebody ought to thank God that you ain't going to fight your enemies because the Bible says vengeance is mine. Yeah. And some people are going through some storms now. Wondering why life is so hard. Little do they know they messed around with the wrong milk crate. <laughs> they put their mouth on the wrong milk crate. They told the lies on the wrong milk crate. My Bible tells me, touch not my anointed. Not anointed. Yeah. I do my prophet. <laughs> no, huh? Yes. You ain't got to fight him. <laughs> I promise you that. Because the very people who think they're stepping up on you, God has a way of letting them get to the <laughs> highest point that they thought they could get to. And bring it. See, that's why you can't afford to fight people. I don't know why I'm going here. That's why you can't fight people. Because you got to understand, miserable people will take care of their miserable selves. That's why you can't fight nobody. That's right. My Bible says, when it says vengeance is mine, it says also in two, 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 two clauses later, it says that their day is fastly approaching. Can I tell you this? I know you want to get them back. I know you want to hurt them. But can I tell you, God has a scheduled date that he has for them. And it may not happen on the date that you want it to happen. But if you keep to trust in God and keep doing people right, God has a day on the calendar where they're destined to fall. Is there anybody here that can say, I can trust God for his day? Hit the last thing. I'm out of here. I can go drink some Powerade. Here it is. Uh, here's the last thing I'll share with you. Uh, 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 Y'all get some out of this. Here it is. Here's the last thing. I know it's different. It's a topical message. No real biblical text, but it's biblical truth. Here it is. Here's the last thing i tell you. Number four, the milk crates Teach us this one last lesson. That you may shake, but you will not break. That's the last thing. You may shake, 
but you will not will not pray yes. when you look at these videos you see one one single solitary truth when people get to the top of the structure the whole structure begins to shake yes. gives the shake and usually after, if you've seen enough of the videos you can tell once it starts shaking it's all about to fall apart can I tell you brothers and sisters sometimes life will shake you if this pandemic has not showed you anything is that life will, will shake you yes. it will shake you up but also shake you shake you down Job says man born of a woman is but of a few days but those few days are full of shaking trouble even Jesus says, in this life, you will have tribulation. Life will shake you. I don't know. I don't care how many scriptures you know. How many Sunday school sessions you've attended. Life will shake you. Sometimes life will shake the living. Oh. <laughs> there I can. I'll let you fill in the blank. Because life has a way of shaking you. Death of family members yes. will shake you. A topsy turning job market will shake you. Some of the same crazy family members doing some of the same crazy stuff will shake you. Praying for that child who won't listen to you will shake you. Two-faced friends oh, will. Yeah. Oh, yeah. People who were present in one season who are absent in another will shake you. will shake you. Yeah. And can I tell you brothers and sisters, life it's going to shake you. Yeah. I wish I had better news for you but because I'm a Bible preacher I got to tell you life is going to shake you. But that's some good news from the milk crates. Mm. Sister Mixon, that's some good news because when you look at the structure, most of them all fall apart. But if you look closely at the crates, I'm giving y'all time to catch up. If you look closely at the crates, while they fell apart, they never broke apart Lord have mercy and, and what I discovered was this Reverend Jackson the reason why they didn't break apart even though sometimes people fell on them was because the crates are not made by the average plastic that you and I use but the crates are made out of something stronger and so, so something so much stable huh, that no matter how much weight falls on it huh, it will not break apart huh. and I'm talking to some other milk crates in the house huh, and God sent me here to tell you huh, yes life is gonna shake you huh. yes life is gonna throw you for some curves huh, but you can go home and go to sleep at night huh, because you will not break I gotta close here now I was wondering I was up at 3 this morning, wondering how I could close the message. And uh, I messed around and, and found an interview from one of the people who fell off the milk crates. <laughs> and, uh, Rev, I, I hope y'all will shout with me. Um, Rev, I, I, I saw something in the video that shouted me. Now, um, the young man on the video, the entire left side of his face was swollen. I shut as if he had just been in a boxing match. Uh -huh. He had a patch over the other eye. <laughs> Believe it or not, the swollen eye was the eye he could see out of. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, you can see that he was missing a few teeth, I assume, from the challenge. I assume. All right. I don't know his dentist, but he was missing a few teeth. All right. I swollen. This was shut, and uh, and he was walking with a bit of a limp. And I started to say, now what's going on? 
with him. I shut, can't see out of this eye, missing some teeth, and you got a limp. And he started to tell his testimony. He said, uh, I messed around and got on top of that milk crate. And I fell and I broke a bunch of bones in my face. Threw my hip out of socket. And even broke something in my arms. But that ain't what shouted me. It's how he ended the video. He said, I broke some bones. Can't see out of this eye. And I'm limping on the video. But he said, but you know what, y'all? I'm still here. That was so simple. You didn't, you didn't shout, so I'll say it again. He said, I broke some bones. I broke my arm. And I dislocated some stuff. Life was shaking him. But he simply said this. I may be hurt. But I ain't broke. And that's the word I got for somebody here today. And that's what I came to tell somebody. You may have some broken bones. You may have a broken heart. You may have a messed up mind. And you may be walking through life with a bit of a limp. But you ought to testify to the car next to you and say, I may be limping. But I'm still here. Do I have a witness in here that say I may I've been through too much not to give God praise? I might as well preach. Is there anybody here that drove the church today and you got some broken arms and you got a dislocated hip? But the reason why you drove here wasn't because everything was good, but you just want to show the enemy that I'm still here. Is there anybody here that can say, I'm still here? If you're still here, why don't you get out of the cars? I said, get out of your cars and wave to the enemy and just say, neighbor, I'm still, I said, I'm still here. Y'all don't want to have no church with me today. Some of you got some broken hearts. Some of you came with tears in your eyes. But the reason why you're still here is that you showed up because I'm still, I'm still here. Yes. Is there anybody here? Yes. Is there anybody here that can give God praise that I'm still, I said I'm still here. Y'all acting bougie today. I wish I had somebody. And see this next shout ain't for the people who got all sunshine and no rain. But this next shout is for the people who've been through hell, who've been through high water. But you can testify after all that I've been through, I still got my joy. I said I still got my joy. I may be limping, but I still got my joy. I may be limping, but I still got my peace. It's still the same. That praise is what I do when I'm going through. Let me see the horns and he'll see the hands of the people that can say I'm still. I said I'm still. Yeah, I'm still. I'm still here. If you're still here, say it. Come on, I can't hear you over there. Don't make me come get y'all. I ain't scared of you today. Come on, let me if you're still here, say it, say it, say it, say it. I'm going to say it to somebody get it. Yes, say yes, yes, say yes. I'm still here. I need you to do me a favor. I feel like preaching on my 16th anniversary. Would you do me a favor, don't you, on the other side of the inside? You can stay there. But if God kept you through the storm, I want you to jump one time. I need you to jump one time. If God kept you through some hell, I need you to jump two times. If God made a way when you didn't see no way, jump three times. But if God keeps on making a way, keep on jumping.
preaching this. But the old folk was saying that every time I turn around, he keeps on doing great things. He keeps on doing great things for me. And is this your testimony? on that job, go in that bathroom, start reminding yourself every time you jump, it's a sign that you're still here. Listen, I hope I bless somebody today. But here it is. Children called me. I said, Pop, what? After 16 years of preaching, what's your testimony? And I started to talk about the prayer of J Bass and Lodge for territory. But my, my testimony is I'm still here. preachers that walk away from ministry than most that God has given you two examples one that's now been preaching coming up on year 52 our pastor Emeritus 52 years you don't think sometimes he thought about quitting But don't you see him still sitting here? But guess what? I'm talking to some people that drove here. And life has given you enough reasons to quit. But if you made it to church, you ought to testify I'm still here. If you're still here, won't you clap those hands, honk your horns. If you're still, still here. We got to go. I think I'm over my time. Here it is. Listen. If you want to know Jesus today, we encourage you. I can't think of a better time to give your life to Jesus Christ. Would you come? We're going to sing our new invitation song. There's nothing better. There's, There's nothing better than knowing Jesus. And knowing Jesus Get sweeter, sweeter In the sweet of eternal life Said you ought to know him You ought to know him Yeah Yeah to know him Come on, say right now So that's nothing better. Come on, look. There's nothing better. Yeah. Than knowing Jesus. Is that your testimony? There's nothing better than knowing Jesus. He will pick you up and turn your life around. And here, come on, let's raise it. Said you ought to. You ought to know. You ought to know him. Get to know him. Come on. Get to know him. Come on, right now.
want you to hunt those horns and wave your hands. so grateful that so many of you showed up. Amen. Even after 9.30. <laughs> Amen. UK. Amen. Listen. Listen, family. Um, a few things I want to share with you. Um, Jacqueline, I don't know her last name, Jacqueline, on Facebook is Jacqueline Bonita, but she lost her sister due to COVID. I want to pray praying for her. Also, uh, we lost another longtime member of Aimwell, J.D. Holloway. Uh, his funeral is uh, pending now. So we're praying for that family. Also, Sister Nina Bowden lost her sister this week. Amen. So we want to be praying for these families. Remember what the first point said, we are better together. together. Listen, come on. Come on. Listen, we get ready to go. Um, there are two things. All right, so listen. Okay, listen, I told you last, a month ago, um, almost a month ago, that um, for those of you who have not received the vaccine uh, due to some of the connections that we have here at our church, uh, amen, we are able to offer Angwa as a mobile site for people to be vaccinated. Somebody will say amen. Amen. Thank God for Sister Mixon for helping us to make that happen. And um, yeah. So listen, those surveys, those surveys, listen, um, this virus, y'all, it's, 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 it's not only hitting adults, but it's hitting young people too. There are a little quarter million students who have been infected in the last week of this virus. I want to encourage you. You eat stuff that ain't FDA approved all the time. <laughs> Some of us have drunk stuff that I know ain't FDA approved. That mixture you got, that ain't FDA approved. Come on, talk to me here. Oh, y'all gonna get real holy on me now. Yeah. That mixture you drank, or oh, get this, that herbal supplement that you puffing on. You ain't just high in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> that ain't FDA approved either. So if you're willing to take the risk with the weed, man, you can't trust Pfizer. I don't understand. All right. All right. Come on. Talk to me here. Come on. I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna let it go. Y'all, y'all, y'all don't lost y'all church happiness now. I'm gonna start messing with you. Listen, if you honk, when nobody know I'm talking to you. Yeah. But listen, listen, this virus is too serious to be playing these conspiracy games. We need to get vaccinated. And at least if you're not gonna, gonna get vaccinated, wear your mask. I don't care what Walmart say. Wear your mask. Be safe. Listen, but if you have, if you desire to be vaccinated, I want you to fill this out, put it back in the packet, and submit it when you give, so we can get a tally of names, so we can make this happen. How many of you are ready for this pandemic to be over? All right. Bible says, faith without works. 
is dead. Y'all to bring us out, but we got to wear our mask and get vaccinated. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. All right. Here's the, here's the other thing. The other thing, uh, other thing, uh, of course, we were supposed to be, originally on our original schedule, we were supposed to be back in church by now, but of course, these numbers are too high for us to go back, and more than anything, I care about your safety. But nevertheless, we are getting ready to celebrate 135 years as a church family. Somebody ought to give God praise for that. Also in your packets, got another well news update. We're preparing for our 135th anniversary, and this year, uh, how many of y'all have been tuning in to virtual worship and you've been seeing these refresh project updates? Have y'all been seeing those? I'm asking you to give a sacrificial offer for church anniversary today as God is continuing to allow us to refresh our entire campus from top to bottom. Um, I'm asking that you would give a sacrificial offering of $150. Now let me define sacrificial so we can all be on one accord. <laughs> um, sacrificial offering is not your tithes and offering. It's not your tithes and offering. It means pay your tithes, but sacrificially. See, tithes and offering is not a sacrifice. It's a mandate. Come on, y'all y'all, y'all quiet. Y'all quiet. I saw some on Facebook the other day. You don't get credit for doing stuff that you're supposed to do. We're supp if you are a responsible Christian, you're supposed to pay your tithes. However, this $150 is over and above your tithe. Some of us can do more than $150. I encourage you to stretch yourself. I'm going to do about four or five times that just as a testimony of gratefulness, not for just what God is doing, but what, what God is going to do in the life of Aimwell Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. So listen, I'm telling you a couple of months in advance, we haven't set a tentative date yet because I would like for us to be in church to celebrate it. Um, but that depends on these numbers and all that stuff. But until then, I want to go ahead and give you a head start. So if you would sacrifice Chick-fil-A three times this week, you'd have half of it right there. Come on, talk to me here. Come on. If you would just sacrifice. Playing the numbers. I mean, if you, if you would just sacrifice. <laughs> Your usual activities, you'll be able to get that done, okay? Amen. Listen, we're getting ready to give. We've got an announcement from... <laughs> we got an announcement today. We're getting ready to give. But go ahead and fill that out. Uh, fill your envelopes out. If you want to give your tithes, you can earmark that on the list, on the name, on the, on the, on the envelope. Offering, go ahead and do that now. Go ahead. Good morning. Pastor Trey was not aware of this announcement, so I had to kind of sneak up here on it. Thank God. Let's give God a hand of praise and give our pastor a great big hand of praise. Thank God for that message. Thank God for that message. And as always, he always deliver us a word in due season, topical or biblical. He's always giving us a great word. And he has been celebrating this week. He announced to us this week that this is his 16th year of ministry, preaching in the ministry. And because of all the work that he has done since being at Aimwell, he deserves not only a thank you, Pastor, but we also want to bless him monetarily. So we want to take this opportunity just to let him know that how much we appreciate him. We thank you for all of the hard work that you have done. I know that you do a lot of work because we talk to you quite often. And he's a workaholic, but everything that he does is for the glory of God, for man, for God, people, and for Aimwell. And because of your hard work, we just want to tell you that we appreciate you. We thank you and to keep on going. So you received in your uh, package this morning an envelope that says the Pastor Appreciation Day. It doesn't mean that this is Appreciation Day, but this is just something that we just want to say look, that we love you and that we thank you for all of your hard work. So those that would like to give, put whatever, whatever you want to give in those envelopes and place them back into your packet, and we'll make sure that Pastor get them. And those that have Cash App and would like to send it through Cash App, I will give you his Cash App name. It is dollar sign, capital T, 
Trey, T R E W, I'm sorry, capital T R E Y W O O L F O L K. That's his whole name, Trey Wolford, dollar sign Trey Wolford. Again, we thank you for all of your hard work. Keep on keeping on. Let's I just want to read that cash out one more time. I think we left out an O. Dollar sign, capital T R E Y W O O L F O L K. Amen. Thank y'all so much. Amen. But listen, as I told you earlier, I can think of a better place to be and a better place to preach than the well amen i love y'all for real for real i love y'all for real amen listen we're getting ready to give now get ready to give get ready to give get ready to give now would you hold your gifts up and repeat after me say lord thank you, lord, thank you. say it louder lord thank you, lord, thank you. for another opportunity lord, thank you. to give back to you a portion of what you've given to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give. Let's give together. It reaches to the high. Yes, mountain. And it flows to the low. From day, from day to day, it will never lose its power. Said the blood, the blood that Jesus so shed. We're giving out. So way back, way back. Come on. Way back on the Calvary, the blood that gives me strength from day from day to day. It will never. Tell them it reaches. Come on. Tell it reaches. It reaches. Come on, go ahead and give that. Chance to give. If 
you have not had a chance to give, honk your horns if you have not had a chance. Yeah, it's power. Never lose. they took it I think it was Paul that said before you take communion make sure you take it worthily as the word says it says examine yourself some of us did some stuff we knew we did wrong some of us did some stuff we didn't even know whatever it is would you ask God to forgive you before we take this need some more time. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It says on that night he took that bread. Took that bread. Said this is my body which has been broken for you. Let's break it. Let's eat it together. Says the blood. Said he took some grape juice. I'm sorry, he took some wine. I'm all discombobulated. I feel like, yeah, took some wine. We got grape juice. Said this is my body. I'm sorry, this is my blood. I'm messing it up, y'all. Which has been shared for the remission of your sin. Let's drink together. Y'all must have shook mine up this time. <laughs> Tasting like some, something else. <laughs> Listen, before we go, two things I want to do that's of, of the utmost important. I need y'all to hear me. And you stop playing for one second. Would you help me thank God for our music ministry? Amen. <laughs> Ain't they doing good? They sound good. We got a bass player, drama, and a keyboard. Let's thank God for our musicians. Amen. TJ, Dante, and Brother Mixon. And while you're in the hunky moon, let's thank God for all of our servants who volunteered, who got here a whole hour before you did. Amen. We thank God. I want to send a special shout out to Brother Dante. We, of course, y'all have been seeing these renovations and things and painting stuff. Can I tell you? <laughs> Dante, you got to let me get it out first. <laughs> I'm proud to announce that I that all of the painting that's happening in our church has been done by our very own drummer, Brother Dante. Would you help me thank God for him? Amen. And if you need a good painter, yeah, yeah, see him. Amen. Amen. We get ready to go. Get ready to go. Get ready to go. Terrence, yeah. You take care of that for me. Okay. Amen. Rev, you feel like you want to go with me? Mom, you want? Yeah, I forgot you. She's a prison lady. She's a prison lady. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Listen, we get ready to go. Get ready to go. Get ready to go. Listen, listen, family, let's get ready to go. I'll see you online next week. And again, tune in for our family check-in on Facebook. We have some good times on that. And so we can stay connected that way. Listen, we're getting ready to go, getting ready to go. But let me bless you before we leave. 
God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this word. Thank you for the message from the milk crate. But God, remind us that we are better together. Keep be with us this week. Be with our bereaved families. Be with us, God. And God, continue to keep us not stacked, but stuck together. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Everybody say amen. Amen. I'll see you on this end of the parking lot. Love y'all, family. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Come on, everybody. Put your hands together. It's got to get better. All over the world. Listen to these words. People come. People come. People go. People go. Your life has been. Your life has been. Out of control. Out of control. You're confused. But don't worry.